Shooting the dance floor. It can be without doubt one of the most intimidating spaces for any wedding photographer to work, especially if you're new to the industry. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to set up and shoot shutter drag, a method that just allows you to capture the movement and action of a dance floor, even when there's almost no ambient light. Let's go. Hey, I'm Sam, a wedding photographer from the UK, and I've been in this industry for just over 10 years now, shooting weddings all over Europe and even further afield. If you appreciate this video and it helps, please, please, please just give us a thumbs up. And if you can, subscribe. The more this channel grows, the more content we can bring your way. Simples. So I can remember starting out in this industry and although nervous about shooting weddings, I never felt out of my depth or worried that I just couldn't execute or frame or deliver something that was a usable shot, apart from one part of the day, and that was the dance floor. It used to drive me mad. I could see good moments happening right in front of me, but unlike during the ceremony or reception or portrait sessions, there was one problem. I had no light. And that put me under pressure. I don't know about you guys, but I'd spend hours and hours on a dance floor shooting so, so, so many frames. I couldn't even tell you how many. But when I got back to my desk, I'd be lucky if 10 to 20 of them were even usable. I'd often miss focus, exposures were inconsistent, and they were just bad frames. Really bad frames, they were just bad. And one day I remember just stumbling across this shot that I'd seen, I, th I think it was on Flickr. Can you remember, can you remember that one? And this is before the days of Instagram, Facebook was a baby. But this one image really got my attention. It was of someone on the dance floor, a drink in hand, the space was dark, but it had these trails of light moving around the subject. The subject was frozen still, correctly exposed, but it had this movement and I just couldn't for the life of me figure out how it was achieved. Fast forward 10 years and I figured it out. And it's shutter drag, a method I still have in my bag now. One that I still use because when it's super dark or you have no ceiling to bounce flash off, this just gives you a guaranteed way of capturing the action without having to spray and pray that you get something. So let's break this down and give you guys the tools that you need to add this to your work. We're going to look at how to set up the flash gun, what you need settings wise on the camera, and we'll just dispel a couple of incorrect setups that I've seen over the years. Also, as a little Brucey bonus, you can use this same setup for sparklers. I always hold a couple of sparklers back, give them to the couple at the end and change it up to shutter drag, bosh. But in short, shutter drag is where we slow the shutter speed down, just enough to capture the movement Unlike during the ceremony where we need a fast shutter to capture the action, here we're going to slow it down and move the camera in order to create motion in the frame. So if you like what we're doing here and this helps, we cover plenty more on how I shoot the dance floor in my course, The Complete Wedding Photographer, which you can find in the description below and we have plenty of free resources and videos for you to check out there as well. So first and foremost, you're going to need a wide angle lens. I'm shooting on the 15 to 35 RF here but a fixed 24 mil prime is ideal. Personally, I find the 35 millimeters a bit too tight. The dance floor can be a squeeze and anything from 15 to 24 just allows you to have that space in the frame. You're gonna be super close to people here. Next up, you're gonna need a flash gun. I'm a big fan of the Godox V1. This is the Canon version. Great build quality, lithium battery that lasts ages and much more reasonably priced than the Canon versions. Sorry, Canon, but they just are. Before we go into the settings, a bit of background on why and how this works. So, technically what we're doing is underexposing the subject before we add the flash. And by using a slowish shutter, we're able to capture the movement of any background lights. These background lights are static though, so it's important to note the movement that you see in shots like this are created by physically waving the camera around in the air like this. Yep. I look daft, I know. But how do you get a usable frame when you're waving the camera around in the air like a madman? This is where the flash comes in. When you fire the flash gun, that burst of light on the subject is ultimately freezing them in the moment. So it fires, it records them on the sensor, but because they go back into darkness, you can move the camera around you to capture the light trails. Are you still with me? Let's talk about the flash gun and a few setup tips for you. First things first, it needs to be pointed 
at your subject directly. We're going to fire this right in their face, which leads me on to point two. Do not use ETTL or anything other than mid to low manual power. If you're not sure why, try firing a flash gun at full power into your face and you'll soon understand why. Actually, no, no, don't, don't do that. No, please don't do that, it's dangerous. Do not do what I've just asked you to do. So the flash gun needs to be direct. It needs to be on manual power. Anything around one over 64 or one over 128 power, you're gonna have to test and adjust, but please, please keep it low. The final setup element of the flash is to zoom the flash. Zooming the flash simply means we're narrowing the output of light. We're concentrating it to the center of the frame. So let's say we're shooting on a 24 mil lens. If the zoom says 24 millimeters, the flash is going to fill that frame, but we want it to zoom in and only fill the center. So I'll dial this into 50 or 70 millimeters, and this just allows us to kill the ambient light around the subject, giving the background lights a canvas to sit on. Also, just to note, if you're using this technique and there's still lots of ambient or even daylight, it won't work. It needs to be dark. If you're doing a first dance in the summer and it's still bright outside, you're going to struggle. It has to be dark. So that's the flash gun side of the work sorted. Now let's dive into the settings you're gonna need on this thing, the camera. A little tip first, once you've dialed these settings in, you can do this on Canon, so I'm pretty sure you can do it on other models because, well, Canon are always the last ones to introduce any new tech to their bodies. But you can create this as a custom shooting mode. So when you're next at a wedding, just spin the dial to C1 and the settings are preloaded. Magic. Okay, so aperture is F8, ISO is 400, and the shutter speed is 0.3 of a second. Again, just slow enough to allow you to capture a little bit of motion without bringing in too much ambient light. Now, occasionally I'll have to adjust these slightly, but these are a good base. And then when you add your flash, start with the lowest power and increase until you've got a good exposure. Again, every room and space is different, so you may have to adjust these settings slightly, but these are my stored and go-to settings. Let's talk about focusing. This is tricky. You don't have much light, and I'm also aware people are still using DSLRs. If you've moved over to mirrorless, you should find you can focus in low light much better than without mirrorless. If you find the focus starts hunting though, and by that I mean it's struggling to focus on your subjects, it's just moving in and out, then a good solution is to increase your aperture slightly to F10 or 11, focus on something or someone that's about three feet away, four feet max, and then once you've focused, switch your lens to manual focus. So now it's locked at that distance. Also, I have my body set up with back button focus. That's a video for another time, but you want to take focusing away from the shutter if you can. So when you walk around the dance floor now with the camera above your head, so long as you're within five feet of your subject, they should all be in focus. But why is it above your head, Sam? Okay, so from experience, if you shoot it at eye level, when you move the camera, taking the shot, the lights in the background, either from the venue or DJ, they tend to start cutting across the subject's bodies or face. If you hold it slightly higher and shoot down, you get the light trails, but above and around the subjects. Whilst we're on that, the subjects are actually capturing the space. A couple of things to note, don't stay on one person for too long. I tend to fire a couple of frames off, then move on. It can be quite intense if you're popping this in someone's grill for 20 frames. They're gonna to wanna to punch you. One to two, they won't notice, but more than five, you're gonna have your card marked. Secondly, don't just shoot shutter drag for the entirety of the dance floor. Like it's quite a striking look, but you should really balance it out with some pure ambient and maybe some bounce flash. That way your couple get a real mix of work from the dance floor. If you deliver five to 10 frames of shutter drag and they're not too keen, but you've only shot shutter drag, you're gonna be in trouble. I tend to use the setup when it gets real messy or it's the end of the night. It's not a first dance kind of shot for me, but you know, you do you. A little myth that I wanna dispel, and I heard this a lot when I started setting up this way, you need to set the flash gun to fire on the rear curtain. So as the rear curtain of the camera comes down, the flash fires. I'm gonna tell you that you don't need that. What you want is the flash to fire first, and here's why. If you see something happening a moment on the dance floor, Remember that when the flash fires, that is ultimately the element that will capture that moment. If you have to wait for the camera to focus and then the shutter to come down, you've missed it. So if you hear that, rear curtain sync, I'd be inclined to say it's wrong. I wouldn't do it. Finally, if you're shooting on a DSLR, you're going to need help focusing. And that comes in the way of a focus assist beam from the flash gun. 
a little red beam from the base of the flash that fires as you focus the camera. I'm not sure if this is the case for other systems. This will only fire when you're in one shot. It doesn't work in servo mode. And there you have it. You're all set up and ready to roll, even on the darkest of dance floors. In summary, flash gun direct to subject, zoomed and low manual power. Aperture set to mid around F8, ISO 400 and slow shutter. Again, if you wanna see how I shoot a dance floor and the other setups I use, go check out The Complete Wedding Photographer in the description below. And if you've taken some value from this video, hit subscribe, give us a thumbs up. If you wanna chat, you can DM me on Insta, it's at samdocker.co. If you've got any questions on this video or setup, reach out on there or pop it in the comments below and I'll be happy to help. See you soon.